바바의 투게 툴리에 빙구니에 투게 투와 미나 바바의 투게 툴리에 음지나 라고 엘리티 쿠스웨 바바의 투게 툴리에 빙구니에 투게 투와 미나 바바의 투게 툴리에 음지나 라고 엘리티 쿠스웨 우주 벨레오 체콜릿 체투 투나 초이 타지 우주 삼매해 마코사 예투 해 Wajina naitwa Joyce Daudi Ngadada. Mimi ni mkurugenzi wa shirika la kimamama na watoto Ifakara. Nikachaguliwa kwenda bungeni kwa ajili ya kuwatetea kina mama maendeleo ya jamii na watoto. Nikaendelea nikafungua kliniki nikampata daktari mmoja kaendelea Lengo ilikuwa ni kusaidia mama na mtoto. Tukaendelea kufanya kazi hizo lakini katika ugumu sababu hatuna vifaa vya kutosha. Lengo ni kupata vifaa vya kutosha na jengo la kisasa. Due to lack of medical facilities, women and children of Ifakara region are forced to walk near 10 kilometers to the nearest hospital, leaving them three times more likely to have complications during or after pregnancy. Today, Ifakara women and children is transporting a young expecting mother to the nearest hospital. Amina is pregnant. She has been having stomach pain for a few weeks now. But at last, she couldn't bear the pain anymore and tried to contact Ifakara Women and Children Organization for help. Because of unsanitary conditions in available facilities, patients are in a high risk of contracting infectious diseases such as cholera, malaria, TB, HIV, and Ebola. Since these diseases are easily transmitted by oral contact mosquito bites or even bodily fluids. Equipment such as sonogram will help to improve the lives of many mothers around the region. Most women do not know the basic information about their pregnancy, including the gender of the baby, the position in the womb, or if they have twins. These factors can cause many complications during or after giving birth. Even today, Cases of polio are still emerging in the community. Although vaccinations are available to mothers, most of them are not well educated on the importance of vaccination. Because of poverty, malnutrition is still a bigger problem to mothers around the Ifakara region. With no male figures to support her, Mama Mele has been having problems since she gave birth. With no food or strength to provide for her young ones, she turns to one place where she knows she could get help. With your support, new mothers like Mama Mele could receive the utmost care they need before and after giving birth. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Dr. Tracy Bakenton, and I'm a general obstetrician gynecologist here in the Peoria area. My name is Ikuya Asante, and I'm one of the pediatric residents here at OSF uh, Children's Hospital. I'm Jody, and I'm here at the Women's Care Center. I'm the director and the nurse here full time. I can't say enough about vaccinations. Again, they're preventative. Um, 
and they're important. But one of the things that we're doing now is we're starting to vaccinate pregnant women so that babies come out and have antibodies already before they ever come out. And so for us, especially in this country, it's whooping cough. If we give mom the vaccination when she's 28 to 36 weeks pregnant, we help baby come out with antibodies. Um, because even in this country, there are shortages. And so there's a shortage of the pertussis vaccine. And so that's part of the reason why the Center of Disease Control recommended giving it to pregnant women, because we can't vaccinate everybody around them. We can't vaccinate mom, dad, the people they go to church with. As a pediatrician, oh, I just want to start with, the reason I went into pediatrics was so I'd be in a position to sort of help um, children uh, become better, you know, individuals as they grow, healthy individuals, you know. Uh, I think of it as sort of prevented, preventative medicine, kind of, where you start the kids off right and then they'll grow up to be really healthy individuals as, as they age. Um, and also, um, part of being a pediatrician is you're we have these tools to help the kids as well. Uh, and here in the U.S., we have all these vaccines that kids come in. Um, almost every uh, every couple of months, they come in, in in the initial phases for vaccinations to help prevent um, diseases. Uh, a, a great example of that is the polio vaccine, which um, I think in the 19 was introduced introduced in like the 1950s or something. Um, after which, in a couple of years, it quickly um, decreased the amount of episodes we're seeing in the U.S. itself. And to this day, we don't have any cases that you know I have heard of. But um, again, that shows how important vaccinations are for kids uh, as a way of preventing these diseases that can be deadly, um, and then if not deadly, can cause debilitating um, uh, conditions uh, as a result. We spend the majority of our money on health issues, but polio rises to the top because we have a unique opportunity over the next several years to eradicate the disease. Only smallpox was ever eradicated, so this would be the second. And if you don't intensify, if you don't raise the money and get it down to zero, it'll come back, and that means it'll be crippling and killing over 100,000 kids a year. So the value of making sure you've got the, the budget and the intensity to get rid of it, it pays off unbelievably because no child will ever be crippled again. Well, and I think even in the most rudimentary clinic, sonogram can have an important impact on prenatal care. Meaning, normally physicians or even nursing staff that don't have a lot of training, they can be taught to, to do certain things in the ultrasound. Um, with some minimal training, you could do dating, so some measurements so we know how large the baby is and about what the date is. Definitely, with very, very little training, we can tell position of the baby, which determines how we're planning on delivering, whether it, it should be a C-section or it should be a normal vaginal delivery. And so, hopefully, if you knew baby was breached, you could move that, that mother out to a different facility where C-sections are available. Um, you can do biophysical profiles. That's kind of a test that we do to check for fetal well-being. So it looks at the breathing, tone, fluid, and movement. And so that can pick up a lot of, of, of problems with babies um, that maybe you should deliver early. So even a very, very basic ultrasound machine can have a big impact on a mother and her fetus. A region like the Ifakara uh, region in Tanzania, or pretty much anywhere in the third world country, having a, a medical facility, a clinic per se, that has all the tools to kind of um, take care of the children and the women, especially during pregnancy, um, would would be fantastic because, first of all, um, they wouldn't have to travel a long ways to get to um, the facility so they can have regular follow-up, which is what you need, especially for the, the kids, especially when they're babies, and also for the women who are pregnant, because they need frequent follow-up. Um, also, um, being in the medical profession, I feel like it's not just um, the patient-doctor relationship, kind of, a, I, I feel like it should be more like a community. So having a clinic that's within the community or close to, 
helps uh, emphasize that the doctors or the physicians or the medical uh, uh, personnel are here to kind of help in there, in, in it with the population kind of. Um, and I think having something close to home too will drastically improve the just the, the lifestyle, their lifestyle basically. Um, when anything were to come up, they'd know to come and see someone at the clinic or um, just for regular checkups, which we take for granted here. It would be easier for them to get to a physician to get that taken care of. Well, prenatal care is important um, because it does help decrease the neonatal and infant mortality. Um, studies have shown over and over that the more prenatal care you get, the more consistent it is, the better babies, mom and babies do. Okay, so this is the ultrasound machine that I use to do the limited ultrasounds that I was trained to do. And so what I usually do is have um, the client sit down on the table, I put some gel on, jelly on her belly, and then I use this device, which is my transducer, and I roll that around on her belly to locate the baby. Once I'm able to see the baby, which this would be the uterus, and this is the baby right here, and these are the legs right here, you can see the head, and the body is down, so we're facing down. So this gives me a full image of what the baby um, where it's at and then I'm able to measure the baby and then find the heartbeat as well. Also having a very clean environment where um, physicians can take care of the patients is very important because that's when, when you think about it that's how diseases are spread. Um, when you know there's contamination from bodily fluids or whatever if it's not in if it's not taken care of appropriately then it can cause more illnesses rather than um, help. So here, it's our number one priority in the States to make sure that we are um, cleaning up appropriately before going into a room to see a patient and after leaving as well. All this in an effort to prevent spreading diseases. Um, for example, polio, that's spread from fecal oral, meaning from um, when someone poops and doesn't you know, clean their hands well enough, then they go touching us, someone else, or they eat, you know, they eat or they prepare someone else's food, you know, then that's how the virus is spread. Um, again, they're not hygienic, it's not clean. Um, it's gonna propagate this uh, infection. That cleanliness and sterility plays yeah. a big role in how, not only how moms do, especially if you're doing C-sections or deliveries in that area, cleanliness is extremely important because again, for the mother, infection afterwards, um, it plays a big risk on whether they live or they die. Um, it's the same with babies. And so, you know, when we're cutting the cord, if the instruments aren't clean, then there's a higher risk of neonatal sepsis, which is a blood infection, and even meningitis. So cleanliness is the simplest and easiest thing that we can do. And so part of it is training and part of it is providing the facilities. Um, you know, looking at the video that you made earlier from Africa, um, you can see the windows are all open, the doors are all open, and so there's a lot of flies and bugs that are, are, are there. So I think with any population, probably the heart to everything are children. Um, if you don't have children, a community can't grow. And without children, they need their mothers. And so mothers and children really are the key um, to helping a community grow. And so you want healthy kids and healthy moms to build a strong community, otherwise it doesn't thrive. So here at the Women's Care Center, our main mission and goal is to serve all of our women in our community with the love and compassion that they deserve, um, especially for the children that they're going to raise because mothers are the ones who have the compassion and love for their family. They're the ones who teach us how to love. They're the ones who are going to be there when we skin our knees. Um, they're there to give us the lessons of life. And so if we can help provide the services and love that they need, they can be better mothers for the children that they're going to raise. And then those children are gonna have generations and the ripple effect will just continue um, for years and years to come and generations 
So we're not just affecting one person or just one life, it's many lives to come. It's the generations of families that matter. Yeah. 